Good afternoon and welcome back. Peter Tankard back in commentary. Steve Mifsud versus Alex Kay. This is a, uh, it's not a practice event, but it's a, a, a warm-up event for the main event, which starts on Tuesday, the World Business Championship. This is called the World Open, but it's uh, uh, not all the best players are here yet. Uh, we're still awaiting the arrival of uh, quite a few of the Indians. Our reigning world champion, Surav Katari, is not here yet. Pankaj Advani is not here yet. Um, and often they feel that they don't want to play the warm-up events, they want to focus on um, four days of the World Championship. But uh, Matthew Bolton is here already. Uh, Peter Gilchrist, Mike Russell, Steve Mifsud, Rob Hall, um, Twaj Hadiyar, um, Sri Krishna Surya Narayanan. Quite a few of the, the leading players are already in place. Steve Mifsud is coming off the best billiards form of his life. Um, in the Australian National Championship, he knocked in his best ever break of 575 unfinished. Um, Matthew Bolton decided that he wouldn't let Steve have the high break prize and then knocked in 583 the following day, but uh, at least for a little while, Steve held the high break prize and his personal best highest break. In the Victorian Championship, he also knocked in a uh, 400 break, a number of 300 breaks, 200 breaks. So uh, he's playing very, very well. And uh, while we're not yet at the serious pointy end of the competition, uh, he certainly enters that as one of the form players. Alex Kay is um, just back from a trip to the New Zealand Open and the Oceania where he played very well made the uh, quarterfinals in one semifinals in the other he is like quite a few of the billiards aficionados a perennial uh, tourist and a peerer uh, once the game gets in your blood it's somebody announces a tournament somewhere, it's hard to not turn up sometimes. Almost none of the billiards players play for the prize money, they play for the beauty of the game. Frankly, the prize money, even with the generosity of the uh, Victorian government and our sponsors, uh, barely covers uh, the costs for the semi-finalists and winners and, and runner-up. But many of the players that appear here, particularly from uh, the Asian countries, are supported by their government, and some of them generously supported by their government. But players from uh, England, Australia, Canada, New Zealand, not so much. Steve Mifsud is in fact a former world amateur snooker champion, uh, won the IBSF snooker and was offered a snooker tour card this year for the Pro Tour. Um, he play, he's played only one event and doesn't seem wildly enthusiastic to take it up. Um, it's certainly uh, difficult to break into pro snooker and Steve's realistic that uh, in his 40s that's going to be a bit of a challenge. I'd hate to think how many times these two Victorians have played each other. B 
billiards players, you will have noticed from the age of many of them, have uh, quite a bit of longevity. And st even Steve, as a relatively young man, uh, would have played all of these players many, many, many times. I remember talking to Todd Hayward, who reported that when he defeated Steve in a semi-final of the Oceania, uh, some five years ago that that was the first time in 29 years that he defeated Steve. Now, it would be hard to name another sport where you can say you've been playing the same opponent for 29 years. This one's got Steve a bit perplexed. Not sure whether he's looking at the moth that's been bedeviling the pit table <laughs> since this morning or casting his eyes up to God there. Either way, it didn't help. Our high break for today at the RACV club. Oh, that's a foul. You would never see that in a million years. Referee didn't see it, opponent didn't see it, but Steve Mifsud being one of the finest sports and gentlemen in the game, called the foul on himself. Glyn McConnell's the referee with the remote control in his hand. Alex is a tall guy, so he uh, has quite a wide stance to get down to the table. But he's not the tallest in the competition. I think uh, Peter Gilchrist at six foot five and Twash Harrier at a similar number are uh, probably our, the leaders in the height department. In fact, they're both so tall that their hips are taller than the table and they can queue under their bodies a la Mark Williams. Got to be a huge advantage and both of them reach without extensions past the centre spot so uh, that's that's got to be a, a big plus. <coughs> On the downside Peter has problems with his back from the, from the constant bending down. Alex has to figure a way of getting his red ball near to the yellow ball so that he can play a cannon to recover that ball into play. A shake of the head. Red's become dangerously close to the cushion there. He has to avoid a double kiss. Well negotiated. <laughs> He's going to try and work the white over to this side of the table so that he can get a cannon and rescue the red ball, which is the most important scoring ball. 
Not only is it worth one point more than the opponent's ball for either a pot or an in-off, but more importantly, it gets replaced if it's pocketed. So coming back up onto the spot means that that scoring zone at the top of the table becomes critical for the best players. Too wide. Alex stabbed at that one a little. This looks like a wide half ball. You have to play it with a little pace. Mm, even harder was, was required. Not much here, Alex. It's slim pickings. You have to create something. That's a good idea. Well done. Played with top spin and left hand side to make it accelerate off the cushion. An intentional pot oppo there, pot opponent. Half the players today are playing at the Yarraville Club, which has, uh, like the RACV Club, eight championship tables. Uh, so it's a big field for the world. Uh, we have 65 entrants, 35 are here today, 30 over at uh, Yarraville Club. I can't report what the highest break at Yarraville is, but I can report that uh, Tuaj Harrier, um, the Indian superstar, has the high break here with 160. Hmm? Uh, Dan, our um, videographer, is reporting 500 and something at Yarraville. Well, there's only a few that it could be. It would be David Corsier. David Corsier. Dan's just running to find out what our current high break is. This uh, tournament is offering a prize of 24,000 Australian dollars, uh, close on 13,000 pounds for a break over a thousand under the balk line crossing rule. So not for this tournament, but for the world championship proper. Uh, and that's a big incentive for these guys but um, it's never been done, not under the balk line rule. There are a number of players in the field who've had a thousand break without the balk line crossing rule. Uh, in fact, I think there's at least four of them. Um, Pankaj Advani, uh, Mike Russell, Peter Gilchrist. Three. Oh, no, uh, maybe only three. I don't think David Causey's had one. I don't think Matt Bolton's had one. Uh, but none of them ever have ever done it under the balk line crossing rule. But if they can, for this tournament, £24,000 awaits. But it was David Causier? Yeah, OK. We've just been reported the high break at Yarraville. Makes our, our high breaks here look a little pathetic. David Causier, 655. Now, to produce 655 when you're scoring in twos and threes, uh, it's something like 250 shots without missing. 
when you consider that a maximum break at snooker is 36 shots, perfect shots, but 36 shots, that gives you some idea of the Seven. difficulty of what's happening here. They're not quite comparable because there are so many ways to score in billiards, and even when you lose position, there's still something else offered in billiards. They say it's always on. So we're not directly comparable, but certainly the skill levels are. So all the players who are at Yarraville today for these elimination rounds will tomorrow be returning here to the RACV and uh, so we'll have more helpers, thankfully more commentators and uh, the return of the best players to here. So tomorrow uh, the matches should be extremely interesting. Steve has a very steady Q action. With a very deliberate strike of the ball, that pause and strike. There's nothing casual about it. That ball checked up off the cushion and has ended up staying in book. It looked like it actually came out, but because of the reverse side that it picks up off the cushion, it's drifted back in there. To compound the problem, there's a join in the slate at about that point too. So often if the ball's traveling sideways and just touches a join in the, uh, join in the slate, it can roll back in. Most of these tables come with five slates. Alex has just slipped behind that red. He really needed to hit that full in the face to push it towards the pocket. So now he's left with a difficult all-round cannon. And he didn't see it that way. He thought it was a fine enough. The 
the in off the red is on from this position on these new cloths because they do throw very wide. And decided on the cannon instead. Try and keep control rather than thrash at it. Take of the head, doesn't like it, but he's still going to play it. This looks like a cannon with check side off the cushion. The double kiss spoilt that. Alex would like to pot this red and then stay on that line for the in off the yellow. Potential five shot here, pot red and cannon. Wave of the hand. Twixt and between here, probably play the cannon. A little softer and he might have left the red in the jaws, but then again he wouldn't have moved the yellow so far. the player really making a big break yet. And it will take a little time to get used to the tables. Clearly David Causey already has.
Sitting pretty close to perfect there for the cross loser. He played it on the full side there. I'm not sure whether that was intentional or not, but it's worked out pretty well. Put the red out in the middle of the table. There's a place just not far from where that red is on the table where the ball is on as an in-off into all four pockets. Um, sometimes known as the magic circle, although it's more kidney shaped than circle shaped. Um, it gives players an awful lot of flexibility if they can get into that zone in terms of where they're going to direct the read after scoring the in-off. That white's uncomfortably close to the cushion. Well done. Now Steve's sitting the cross loser line on the way back there. Played this time with some right hand side, check side, to narrow the throw. Not quite enough. So Alex can clearly see two shots ahead here, in off yellow, in off red. He's been a bit careless on where he's placed the yellow. So now he'll try and direct the red just to this side of the yellow to make a cannon coming back. permitted. That's a cannon and a red pot, so a five shot. Slip to buy there. Next match we're featuring uh, Twash Harrier and you'll see some Twash play what he's been playing all afternoon, some very tight and close top of the table. Yes, for a tall guy, he has such a delicate touch. Just strokes the ball so gently. Deep screw back, but beautiful control. Seventeen. Playing the forcer here, the red will travel about four lengths. Or would have if he'd hit it in the middle. Awkward getting the rest in here. Pretty good shot from where he was. The rest was on one foot. Alex was on one foot. Well done. So 
So he doesn't like the potential of the double kiss on the cu off the cushion on the red there, so he'll just... Oh, he was trying to hit that, getting in off in the yellow and push it up, but he was very thin on that, missed it by a full half ball. Probably so pleased with the previous shot. Steve might play a cushion first cannon here. No, it's just a stun cannon. Playing the cushion first cannon moves the red, and now the red's still stuck there a bit. Uh, fortunately there, and it is just fortunate, the white's come over the middle pocket, so we can put them back together and have another go. It's all about getting that red back into play. That little nudge made a huge difference in terms of creating the right angle and getting the red off the cushion. Uh-oh, could be angled, no. No, he can see through, that's okay. Lovely control. Checking to see if the spot is clear. Decided he wants to come over this side. So he can play a run through cannon thick on the white. Recovery cannon there. See if you can figure out Steve's process of getting that white close tight behind the red. He has to keep scoring, but he's also got this secondary objective of keeping that white in tight to the spot because it makes the cannons much easier to start with, but it also gives him a lot of flexibility in where he can direct the other balls if he's got it in tight. Come a bit too far there, he's almost straight. Uh, he would have liked to have been four inches short of that. He can still make it, but... Okay, he try, had to trust a little bit to good fortune there, and he has been fortunate. So he's moved the white a little. But now he's up above them again, coming down, so that's what he wants, where he wants to be. Now he's got a correcting cannon. And there it is, the white's behind the spot again. So these direct cannons, where he's coming down from up above the line of pot on the red, actually knocking the white ball further and further away. So eventually he'll have to come behind the white ball uh, off the cushion. And it won't be far from now to knock it back up towards the spot. Now he'll actually go the other way here, play it as a direct cannon and try and knock it up. Maybe too hard to get behind now. the knock-up shot. He's keeping referee Glenn McConnell on the move. No mucking about with Steve. Sees it, plays it, as do all the great players. 
None more so than David Corsier. So he can get behind this one now, and I think he might try that. Yeah. He hasn't got the red into ideal position, so I have to play in off and start again. Great shot. And followed up with a pot. And stayed there for the cannon angle, so it's a cannon white to red, but thick on the white, so it's a run through tap onto the red. Beautifully done. So you can see that just the slight variance at angle of his own ball relative to the red determines what style of shot he's playing, direct or indirect, off the cushion, with side, with outside. And these players are masters of this element of the game. All three balls under tight control. It's also it's the hardest element of the game, but it's the, the part that looks the easiest. So there have been a lot of players over the years that look at this element of the game and say, well, that looks pretty easy. And all I can say is, try it. All three balls, minute control. Break goes to 124 now. <coughs> Steve starting to dominate the match as most people, including Alex, expected. Oh, he slipped the wrong side of that one now, so a recovery screwing off. But he's got a bit of rhythm going, there's a bit of pace in his step. So he's not umming and ahhing, he's uh, definite about what he wants to do. But it's, when it's flowing like this, is a much, much faster game than snooker. Break comes to an end at 133, quite creditable, but in this company, unspectacular. If it's touching ball and both Glyn, the referee, and Alex think that it is, then it's a compulsory re-spot. Respot is where the opponent's ball goes on the centre spot and you play from in hand with the red on it on the billiard spot. That's a pretty classic result that Steve just got there, played it off three cushions to leave the standard drop cannon. Yellow chasing down behind the spot. Hasn't worked out 
brilliantly. A nice flick of the red. Got it a bit full. Clever shot all around the houses. Scores a cannon, leaves a red pot. tight there. So he's left a cannon coming back. He has to be fine on this red and soft. That's lovely. Don't drop. That's beautiful control. Snooker is uh, a wonderful sport, but it's a bit more deliberate than billiards. I think you can see the shot time in snooker is sometimes typically between 20 and 30 seconds. Here, they play as soon as pretty much the ball is spotted or it's stopped rolling. And it's a much more intuitive feel type of game. But every so often you have to inspect that ball. Was it touching the rail or not? So with white behind the uh, billiard spot there, Steve just needs to pot red and be in prime position. Glid on the hop. <laughs> Steve passes 345 minutes, so he's motoring and wants to even motor faster. He's got, got the bit between his teeth now. There's the bell. Well done, Steve. Well done, Alex. Cheers.